Hey, welcome to Chase the Veil. I'm Mike Wise from Mike Wise Photography, so we'll introduce ourselves. Krista Tharp with Tharp Events and Blissfully Simple Wedding Planning. Joanne Rossi with Rossi's Catering Continental Ballroom. Jennifer, Jennifer Rossi with Rossi's Catering Continental Ballroom. Okay. Well, what we're going to discuss, uh, we've I just wrote a blog post about talking with your photographer and what to ask them. So we're going to be doing a few um, in the next couple of weeks with a series about what to talk to your uh, wedding professionals about when you meet with them. Because a lot of times you can go online and you know there's these list of questions and they're sometimes good, sometimes bad. But I think the thing is, is you know, getting those answers, you can easily put answers out there that are the perfect answer for every single thing. So we're going to talk about photography questions to ask your photographer before you book with them, while you're meeting them. Um, the ladies all wanted to just kind of fire away and ask because, <laughs> of course, they had their own questions to ask. And then if we have time, I'll try to fill in with some other questions to be able to ask. So if you have some that you... I got one. I hear this. Do I get to keep my... Can I have a CD of all the... Prints. Sure, uh, that's that's Make huge. My own copies. Yep, the the high resolution files is very very important to a lot of couples. Um, you know, my biggest thing looking at that is is that I want to make sure that you're getting the idea that you can print your own, and that comes in three out of my four packages. But um, I also give a professional lab to each. Uh, bride that gets those because in that way their pictures aren't going to look like they took them to CVS or Walmart or you know something like that because that's the thing that I think people are so oh we, we've got to get our digital files yeah. so we can print our own and, and that's great but they don't realize that if they're taking those to those kinds of you know little kiosk in the store your pictures aren't going to look like what they look like when you order them from your professional. Uh -huh. So that's kind of the trade-off of giving those in packages. The biggest thing is just educating them on what to do with them to get their pictures to look uh -huh. the way that they need Mike, to. isn't it also, I know there are a lot of photographers that will not do that because they will go to CVS and then someone will look at the picture and say, who did your, pic your right. pictures? You'll say, Mike Wise, and they'll say, well, that's not a good picture. I'm not going to go to him. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a problem, and there's literally nothing that I can do about it mm -hmm. once they want to do that. My biggest thing is trying to educate them, to get them to understand if you take it there, that can happen. Right. And then also, you know, I show them, you know, when they're coming in to meet with me, I'm like, you know, here's, here's what a print looks like. Here's, here's what you're getting. I probably need to go to one of those places and just have a comparison, right. but you know, it's one of those where people realize that it's it's glossy and the colors are off because of whatever color correction they used and things right. like that. So it's just trying to get them to understand that yes, they do have the digital files, but you want to still be using. There are a few professional labs out there that have the same equipment that that service only photographers that have sister and brother companies that deal with the public right. and uh, you know there's they're they're out there you know so yeah. my biggest thing with trying to suggest having those for bride and grooms is your backup you know and it's one of those where i always tell them you want one copy for yourself and one copy at either parent house mm -hmm. so that if there's a fire tornado anything like that you didn't lose your files I was telling friends, I'm gonna guarantee your files for up to two years but then after the two year time period, I just, I find that that's, that's a long enough time for me to make sure that I've got them for you. But then after that, the storage is just mm -hmm. becoming huge, um, you know, from the file standpoint of trying to keep them up, updated on the latest hard drives and not feeling like I'm wasting a lot of time on that end. So what's your question, Joanne? <laughs> My question's for the end. Oh, is it's, it? Well, then I'll yeah. throw this one. Okay. My I'll throw this one. In. What happens if one of your cameras go out? Well, it's very possible that it could. Um, I've never had a camera itself not function. I had a card one time that didn't function in the middle of a ceremony. Um, very, very seldom does that happen. You're never going to see me at a wedding without two cameras on my body. And so that was the thing that happened when I was shooting when the card went bad. Literally, I have one camera that's on this shoulder and the other camera on this shoulder. And so as soon as the card went bad, I'm shooting and I look and, you know, gave me an error reading. So that camera goes 
to the side and I'm now finishing up with this camera. I had another card with me, so basically I swapped out the card, it worked, I was okay. That's the problem that I think a lot of people don't realize is if you don't have that backup equipment, you don't want to yeah. be caught there with one camera for right. the wedding day because you're going to end up having to go out and talk to a guest and say, can I borrow camera. your little... Yeah, yeah. exactly. Or, and that you has know, happened. I mean, yeah. it's happened. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. it's uh, it's a risk, and I mean, you know, from that standpoint, I usually I don't go to a wedding with less than three cameras. I usually go with four, and you know, like I said, it's it's not that I'm so worried that cameras are just going to break because it doesn't. It's not an occupational worry, but it's something that you never know of whether something's going to just crack Technology's out. Technology is great, but it's not. It perfect. is. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you can't rely on just one. So I, you know, I get brides in here all the time and I always tell them, ask, what's your priority? And I always give an example, if it were me, my priority would always be the photos. Even though, you know, we do food and the reception, that's all great. But at the end of the day, you have the groom, the ring, and the photos. Right. And so I tell people to really investigate and invest in those photos. So. My question, I, and I think Brad should have asked this question: What is the difference between and why, and, and why should I choose someone who is a five hundred dollar photographer compared to someone who is more? Like, right. what what's the difference, and what are we what are we looking at? There's a lot of differences. Um, you know, you may have someone that's charging, you know, the five hundred dollar price tag that might just be starting off that may only shoot three or four weddings a year and it's just a hobby they're a serious hobbyist and that's okay um, you know you got to remember that you know someone that only charges that amount of money may um, you know may be doing that with the idea that you know it's just something to pay for their equipment and you know it's not something they're doing because they love doing it it's right. it's an avenue for them to get a new lens and you know, when you're looking at differences between someone who charges more versus someone who charges less, I think that's where you've got to look at, you know, quality of pictures, you've got to look at the customer service, um, you know, are they going to follow up with you getting your products to you? Are, are they going to follow up with you on, you know, doing an engagement session? Are they going to follow up with you at all? You know, do they answer your emails? Is it, you know, problems getting a hold of them? All those things. And then the wedding day, especially. I think that's where a lot of times people will, will ask, this is the question that I usually get, is, you know, how long have you been shooting weddings? Well, that's, that's not the question you want to ask. You want to, you want to ask, how many weddings do you shoot in an average year, or how many weddings have you shot overall? Because I can say, well, I've been shooting weddings for 10 years. If you do one a year. Exactly, yeah, that's, that's 10 weddings. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where, you know, from that standpoint, You've got to be a little more specific, and that doesn't mean that someone that's been shooting 150 weddings is better than the person that's only shot 25, because there can be right. those differences, but I think the biggest thing is just trying to find the person that you gel well with for the day, and just trying to find that person that you feel comfortable in their decision making, because that's, for me, that's one of my biggest, is, is I want the bride and groom to trust me, and to feel like I'm there when they want me, and I'm not two feet away from them the entire day, but I also like the idea of being there when they're looking around like, okay, what do we do next? You know, I want to be within arm's reach at that point where I can say, okay, you know, we're going to do this, come on over here, and you know, that's, right. you guys are that way as well. It's just trying to make sure that we're there in their need and not what they might do and might not do yeah. and and to know what they would like and not like you know because you're going to be taking those pictures you need to be yeah. able to make that judgment That's, I, that is one of the things that the engagement session for me is huge because I find that I I get that sense you know I try to learn as much about them as I can and just that comfort level is huge because if it's where the signals aren't meeting up, right. that can That's where you difference. learn their personalities yes. and all that. Exactly. And I think the comfort level is, is very, very important. Yeah. Thanks, Jennifer. 
took my question. Was that no. your question? Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> well, it, you know, I, I know we're getting towards the end, but it, you, the one thing that I know that I, I have to uh, talk to a lot of brides is, and if you'll touch on it quickly, um, usually when they find out how much a photographer is, the first thing out of their mouth is, geez, or I'm in the wrong profession. Will you explain to them, please, that what they see the wedding day is only 10% yeah. of what a photographer does. Yeah, uh, you know, just from start to finish, it can be anything from, you know, handling the calls to set up the meeting. You know, I usually have an hour consultation, sometimes longer if it's chatty. Um, you know, then you're dealing with the time for the engagement session, um, the travel, you know, setting up, travel schedule. batteries, making lenses, making sensors, to making sure everything's in working order, and that's usually a routine. Every, every wedding pre-night is getting all that ready, and that's, that's time that you can't be sitting there watching TV thinking, oh, okay, I got to do this, and I'm, I'm doing it. It's not hard work, but it's still work, and, you know, it's then the wedding day itself, you know, it's setting everything up before, tearing down, you know, all day long, and then... After that, then you get to editing, and you know you're talking. If you take three thousand pictures on a day, you've got to go through three thousand pictures at the end of it. What's an average picture? How many pictures do you usually? Take? I usually take anywhere between about fifteen hundred and two thousand, somewhere around there. Um, and I'm probably on the low end. I know there are a lot of other photographers that shoot a ton of pictures, and and that's fine. I mean, I I, I find I'm more selective in what I shoot versus just you know all the way through the day not that that's bad because I know I mean there are unbelievable photographers that say they shoot 5,000 shots on a 10 to 12 hour day and that's that's fine it's not my cup of tea you know and I think that's where then you look at the the editing process and then the ordering and making sure that everything's ready for them when they're ready to pick up all their products that's usually where people that are charging $500 that's that's not going to one happen, or they're going to realize I probably could go ahead and get a job at McDonald's and be mm -hmm. making more money by the time that I've done all this, yeah. and hope to try to make a career out of this. And yeah. So that's that's kind of where that comes in. So. Great. All right. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate the uh, the drilling yep. session, and that, those are the same types of questions that I get when I am meeting with bride and groom. So I really appreciate it, and uh, we'll see everyone on the next episode of Chase the Veil at chasethevale.com. Thank you.